Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, it's already Friday today. I hope everybody's doing well, wherever you are. <clears throat> it's already the weekend. It's August 14, 2020. Yes, Joe, thank you for reminding us. It's the feast day of St. Maximilian Kobe. Who knows the story of St. Max? Max. <laughs> yeah, that's the nickname of people called Maximilians. Yeah, Max, or maybe Million, I don't know. <laughs> St. Max. He was the priest who was incarcerated in... In Auschwitz, during the persecution of the Jews by Hitler, right? We were just talking about our Jewish ancestry. <laughs> so it's uh, very apropos that we talk about Maximilian Kobe. Okay? For those of you who uh, might not know, well, the, the, the Kleochkos are, are Jewish by uh, lineage. Um, Kleochko was a... Uh, was a Jew, <clears throat> very much a Jew. My grandfather, Aaron, um, studied in a rabbinical school. He wanted to become a, uh, a, um, a rabbi until other things intervened in life. But anyway, yeah, uh, we have Jewishness in our uh, lineage. And today... We are celebrating that the feast of a great saint, Maximilian Kobe, who gave up his life um, in exchange for a married man who was incarcerated with him and who was about to be executed. And uh, he offered his own life to be um, a sacrifice in substitution for this man in order that, in the hope that. Maybe this man will be spared, and after the war, he can go home to his family. And that's, that's what happened. So we give thanks for the example of St. Maximilian Kobe. Okay? Uh, and uh, give thanks to God for this great saint. Okay, so today, we are going to consider the gospel of today's Mass, which comes from St. Matthew. Chapter 19, verse, verses 3 to 12. And this gospel is a little long, and it's about marriage. It's about, um, you know, and it's, very, it's very timely that uh, it's also being read during the feast day of St. Maximilian Kobe, because Maximilian Kobe became a martyr for marriage, for, for Christ in, in protection of a man's uh, uh, right uh, uh, to marry and to go home to his family. So this is a story where the Pharisees ask Jesus, right? Um, you know, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And of course, Jesus says, no, it wasn't like that from the very beginning. But he says, but the Pharisees insist, well, what about Moses? Moses said it's okay to divorce your wife as long as you give... Uh-oh. What's Ava up to? He says, as long as you give your wife a written notice of divorce, then you can divorce your wife. And how does our Lord answer? He says, what God has joined together, man must not separate. Okay? So our Lord was reinforcing the doctrine here of marriage that from the very beginning, God made them man and woman in that they are to be joined in marriage. Marriage is one of um, the, the vocations and the ways of life that our Lord has ordained for men and women to come together and live together and raise a family um, that will be raised up according to God's intentions, to God's will. But the Pharisees were trying to trap Jesus and see whether he was going to contradict what Moses had uh, given them as a, as a, you know, an allowance. Okay? It wasn't really a rule or a law, but it was more like an accommodation. Mm -hmm. And our Lord gives the answer why Moses 
gave them that accommodation? The answer is, well, Moses did that because of the hardness of your hearts. Pay attention. Okay? Moses gave you that kind of an accommodation because of the hardness of your hearts. In other words, that wasn't really the rule. That wasn't really the law. Marriage was meant to be a lifelong commitment. But because you nincompoops are so stubborn, <laughs> because you people are so stubborn, so rebellious, Moses gave you a little bit of an allowance, gave you some slack in the hope that you may wake up from your stubbornness, you may realize what you're doing wrong and correct your ways. So in other words, Jesus was saying it wasn't meant to change any rule. It was just to give you enough time and opportunity to realize and understand your mistakes about this particular thing called marriage and hopefully correct your ways and get back on course to the way marriage was intended to be. Okay? Now we can apply this kind of, this kind of um, um, uh, answer of Jesus to our own selves today. Okay? Many times, this is the way God acts towards us. And by the way, even your parents act this way towards you once in a while. Okay? Because your parents act uh, under the authority of God when dealing with you and in, in disciplining you. In general, this is the way God sometimes works with us. He extends patience. He stretches his understanding. He uh, continues to exercise plenty of tolerance towards us because we can sometimes be so incorrigible. We can sometimes behave very stubbornly about our own defects and our own sins. Okay? Uh, sometimes God extends so much accommodation towards us. Okay? Why? Because He's the good shepherd who always looks out for the lost sheep. That's just the logic of that. Okay? God is a father. The image of the good shepherd. The image of a fatherly shepherd who always looks out for the lost sheep. That is why we have that parable that he himself gave us okay, about the shepherd going out for that one uh, lost sheep and leaves the 99 behind. Or it's like the, the, uh, the, the father of the prodigal son who seeks out his own prodigal child and brings him back to the family. Okay? This is what God is. And vis-a-vis -vis us, okay, the stubborn, the stiff-necked, the, 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 the uh, uh, stone-hearted people, his own children, who rebel against him many times, well, our Lord extends his mercy, right? Yesterday, in yesterday's commentary, we were talking about that. We were talking about God's mercy. So this is the reason why God keeps on um, extending His mercy as far as He could, as wide as He could. It's because many times we are like these Pharisees and these Jews. We harden our hearts. We are so stubborn with our sinful ways. We can be so incorrigible and rebellious. Even if we already know that something is wrong with us, even if we already know that we are committing sin, even if we already know that, 
you know, we have all of these um, uh, uh, defects and all of these wrongdoings, sometimes we persist in our wrong ways. Sometimes we insist on doing what we want to do. And we don't want to do what God wants us to do, the way things have been determined from the very beginning of time. Like marriage, right? God was, our Lord was saying here, no, it wasn't like that from the very beginning. Man and woman were meant to be married for life. And let no man put that asunder. Now the same thing is true with us. When God created us, we were meant to be with Him forever in heaven. Remember that catechism question, very basic catechism question. Why did God make you? Answer. Okay, well, God made us to know, love, and serve Him, and to be happy with Him forever in heaven. Very good, Chevelle and Mia. See? That's the definition. That's exactly what life is all about. That's what God made us for. But many times we don't go that we don't go that route. Right? We want to go the other way. We want the other path that we forge for ourselves. And God, what does God do? He's the good shepherd who looks out for us. Wait, my sheep went the other way astray. Let me go and hunt him. And bring him back to the right path. Okay? But, you know, God can only do that to a certain extent. He cannot keep running after us if we keep running away. Why? Because God respects our freedom. See? God who created our freedom is not going to be the first one to violate that freedom. He will be the first one to respect that freedom. And many times, when we live a sinful life, what's happening there is we abuse our freedom. Okay? It is not using freedom anymore. It is abusing freedom when we persist in a sinful life. When we are stubborn about our sinful ways. It is not use of freedom. It is rather the abuse of freedom. The abuse of freedom. So, if we keep abusing our freedom, well, there will come a time when God will just, not that He gives up on us, He will never give up on us, but rather, there will come a time when God cannot perhaps do anything anymore because we are the ones who resist. Okay? It is not that God is not extending His His mercy and His love to us all the time, like our parents do, right? Like your parents do. They keep extending their patience and their understanding and their accommodation and their tolerance. But there comes a point where we just have to say, well, you're, you're free and you're free to, you know, you don't want to you don't want to uh, to come back to the fold you don't want to straighten up your life there's hardly we can do there's hardly anything we can do about that okay there, there there has to come a time and a point in your life where you will make the decision to come back to the fold to straighten up your life to realize your mistakes and you come back to God And God respects our freedom to do that. So, and if we don't come back to God in the end, then there will be consequences. You hear me say that all the time. There will always be consequences for our behavior, whether they be good behavior or bad behavior. There will always be consequences. And as I reminded you yesterday, yes, God is merciful, and will never tire to extend mercy to us, but he is also just and will deal justice to us. Okay? And uh, if, if we lead a good life, that justice will mean we go to heaven with him forever. If we didn't lead a good life and we die in the state of sin, 
that justice will mean we perish in hell. So let's not forget that, that while God is merciful, he is also all just. So, but how do we cure this stubbornness of our hearts? How do we cure this uh, stiff naked, uh, 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 huh? <laughs> stiff neck tendencies we have? How are we going to cure that? Okay, uh, I have five prescriptions here that we could keep in mind. Okay, number one, be humble and recognize that you can't go it alone. This life that we are trying to, to, to tread, the path towards sanctity is not something we can go alone into. We need the guidance of people who can guide us. We need the advice of people who can advise us. Those especially given to us by God who have the grace to guide us in life. And in your case, that's your parents. Or maybe a spiritual director for you adults listening out there. Or even your spouse or even anybody who uh, can give you fraternal correction as we were talking about yesterday. Or your pastors who can guide you in the spiritual life. There's always somebody who can help. We have to be humble enough to recognize we can't go it alone, that we need help. Second, we have to be sincere in our repentance and our expressions of sorrow for our sinfulness. And that is why we have the, we have the sacrament of confession for that. Right? We have the sacrament of confession. Make every confession matter. Don't go to confession like it's just another chore you do. Make every confession matter. Make every confession like it was the last that you're ever going to make on earth. Where you really express your sorrow and contrition for sin. Next, be vigorous in fighting against temptations. Put on real effort. Not just a token, you know, your goody-goody one day after you realize something. But then after that day passes, you're back to your old uh, 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 bad self. <laughs> Doesn't work that way, right? You got to be consistent. You got to put real consistent effort in trying to improve your life. So... Um, Put a lot more effort there. Put more vigor and energy in fighting against temptations and, and avoiding occasions of sin. Next, be, be conscious of your piety, your devotions. Really try to live a pious and devout life. A life of prayer. A life of dealing with God. That's what that means. That's what piety means. That's what Devotion means be conscious of God's presence in your life every day and really <clears throat> try to make God part of your every day. Because being conscious of the presence of God in your daily lives will help you stay away from those temptations, will help you be mindful that there are certain things that come your way during the day that are the devil's disguise. Okay? But if you're not conscious of the presence of God in your life every day, then those disguises of the devil, <laughs> when they pop up in your life, they become temptations that you need to overcome. Otherwise, you fall into sin. And then lastly, lastly, be close to Our Lady. Be close to our Blessed Mother. Our Lady is our big, big ally in heaven. Okay? Remember that she is our mother. And mothers, they, never they will never let their own children go astray. They always want their children to be close to their fathers. Okay? That's what mothers, the role of mothers are in a family. They unite children with their fathers 
So let's be very close to Our Lady. That's why the little devotions that we that we uh, we perform every day to foster that love for our Blessed Mother, those are very very important in helping us to soften our hearts rather than harden it. Soften our hearts, make it learn to love. Make it learn to love rather than keep rejecting what our Father God is telling us, is showing us, and is directing our lives towards. Let us learn to be very close to Our Lady. Okay? So those five things, if we keep them in mind and we keep practicing them, number one, humility, number two, sincerity and repentance and sorrow for sin, Number three, vigorous fight, to put up a vigorous fight against temptations. Number four, to be pious in our devotions, particularly the Holy Eucharist, by the way. I failed to mention that. Okay? Be very close to the Holy Eucharist. Piety is, is, is shown uh, very much in the faith we live in the, uh, in the relationship we have with Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. And number five, be very close to Our Lady. Okay? Cling on to your mother's... Uh, skirt and she's gonna lead you to jesus okay that is it for us everybody have a good weekend i hope you enjoy your weekend and stay uh health healthy and safe and have fun okay bye that's bye. it for us see you next week bye bye eva okay all right how was that honey tomorrow Tomorrow? Assumption. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's right. Tomorrow's the Feast of the Assumption. Today is the 14th. That's right. Tomorrow is August 15th. The Feast of the Assumption. It's a solemnity. Okay. Jeez, uh, I wonder where we can hear Mass, if we can. But we'll see. Okay. We'll see you next week then. <clears throat> Bye.